All right, folks, welcome back. This is going to be part two of our barrel harmonics testing. If you didn't see video one, you are going to be extremely lost. I don't want to spend 15 minutes recapping the last video. We're just going to jump right into it. So if you're on YouTube, you should see a link up in the top right corner popping up right about now to the first video. You should go watch that and we'll see you back here in about a half hour. Okay, good. So now we can assume everybody's up to speed. Remember this target from the last video? Of course you do. We've already determined that you're up to speed. We're shooting 6.5 Creedmoor using my Thompson Center Compass, and we're trying to find devices that will match the group size that we shoot when I have my suppressor on the gun. So we found several here last time. The Lump, the Harrell's Precision Tuner Brake, the Silencer Co. Flash Hider, the VG6 Gamma 6.5, and the Limb Saver Barrel Deresonator. Lots of great comments coming in, and a bunch of people were wishing that we had some more lumps in various other sizes. This guy's 25 ounces. So Dave, the maker of the world famous lump is gonna make us a couple more. He offered to make us a couple more. Extremely generous of him. So everybody be sure to give a nice thank you down in the comments to Dave if you see him. So today we're not messing around with the lump. We'll wait until we get the other devices he's gonna make, which no rush Dave, take your time brother, but that'll be in a future video. Now, something I had mentioned in the last video and something that was requested a lot in the comments was to take our limb saver and try and combine it with devices that either shot well or shot bad and see, see how it goes. So that's gonna be a lot of the shooting today. We're gonna to take like, yeah, this guy right here, this is the M11 that shot a pretty craptacular group last time. We're gonna try it. Well, first we're gonna shoot another group with it to verify that crappy group wasn't just a fluke. And then we're gonna put the limb saver behind it and see how they shoot as a tandem. We're gonna do that with several devices today. Another thing, the best group in the last video was the little Silencer Co. Flash Hider. A couple people speculating that the prongs of the Flash Hider help to, I don't know, dissipate vibrations and stuff or whatever. Maybe that's why it was doing a good job, I don't know. But my gun definitely liked this guy. Well, I've also got this guy, which is the exact same device from Silencer Co., except it's the Muzzle brake version. This is a 30 caliber muzzle brake, pretty much otherwise exactly the same, except it's a brake. These weigh exactly the same, or at least down to the eighth of an ounce, which is the closest that my kitchen scale reads. So today, instead of shooting a flash hider, we're gonna screw on the Silencer Co. brake and see how it does. Pretty simple device, right? There's no, uh, no vents going up or anything, just kind of a pretty, pretty standard brake, kind of like the Michelic, I guess. Yeah, the Mitch look we shot in the last video, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Kinda, sorta, somewhat similar maybe. So that guy's on the list. Another idea that was brought up that got me thinking was someone was wondering if flat base bullets would work better than the boat tail bullets we've been shooting in this sort of a test. Because at least at this point, we know it's not completely all about weight, right? There's a, there's a gas component of this going on. And someone shared a fascinating slow-mo video of the differences of a boat tail leaving the muzzle and a flat base bullet leaving the muzzle. And how much more turbulence and crap there was around a boat tail when compared to a flat base. Which goes back to that reasoning, like short range bench rest, it's all flat base bullets. As far as I know, I'm, I'm, I'm no expert. But I know when my grandpa handed off his six PPC to me and handed me about a million bullets for it, they're almost all flat base. I think that's just what those guys shoot. It's longer ranges when the boat tail design starts to uh, become the superior design, I think. So we might just load up some flat base bullets in one of the upcoming, at this point, this is gonna be three or four videos it's going to. There's no way to avoid it. So I think in one of those videos, we'll load up some flat base bullets. Currently, the only 6.5 millimeter flat base bullets I have are these interlocks. We've shot a few of these in the compass. We actually shot, also shot some factory ammo that was loaded with these bullets. The compass didn't exactly love them. And that was with my suppressor. So I don't know if we'll use this bullet or maybe I'll look into getting something else. I'm not sure yet, but I loved that idea. The video was fascinating. I'll have a link for it down in the description and I'll put, a, put up a little thingy at the end where you can click on it. And I've got a little uh, harmonics testing playlist started that I'm putting all these videos in and the other videos I've talked about are all in that playlist, so I'll be sure to add that video to the playlist. So I think that's about it for the, for the talking. Lots of ideas down in the comments, like a lot, lot, of, a lot going through my 
pea brain right now. But for today, I want to shoot 12 more groups and maybe that'll add some to the confusion. And maybe we'll, you know, we'll start to see a trend or something that'll begin to make sense of stuff. So, all right, I had a bit of a problem on the range. I've already shot these, but I had a camera malfunction. I had a bad memory card on my target camera. So I don't have any target footage of the first eight groups. I think it was eight groups. Yes, it was the first eight. So let's just look at the target and we'll talk through it. And then the last four groups, I've got actual range footage. It'll only take a couple minutes. Now, the first group I shot was just with the bare barrel. I had, I had run a couple patches down the bore just with some uh, Blistol. No like heavy solvents or anything. I just wanted to maybe knock a little carbon out of there. It had been 150 or 200 shots since I had cleaned the barrel at all, which this barrel has been good about that. Like we just shoot it, you know, clean it every once in a while. But today I did run a couple patches down it and I shot a five shot group with the bare barrel, no muzzle device, just to verify things and see what we, uh, see what we'd shoot. Here is the target with the first eight groups. The bottom right hand group there is our bare barrel fouling shots. It was a 1.423 inch group, pretty close to what we expected. If you'll recall, the good groups are generally like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 something. The bad groups are generally over an inch, 1.1 .1 to 1.4. So just a little bit of verification that the bare barrel still shoots crappy and our guns warmed up and fouled up. The next thing we moved on to was the M11. This guy right here, one of our heavier devices. Now in the last video, this shot a 1.463 inch group. We saw horizontal stringing. It just wasn't all that impressive. So the group today was a good bit better. It was 1.054 inches. So a good bit of improvement, pretty respectable group, but still not quite one of the tightest we've seen. So the M11 by itself, it's just not one of our better performers so far here on the Compass. So the very next group, I added in the limb saver right at the front of the barrel. I left about an eighth of an inch gap, maybe like something like, something like that. Later on, when we actually get to the range footage that I was able to get, you'll see this guy behind a different device. I shot, I tried to keep the same gap with all of the devices today and it was pretty close to the front of the barrel. So here was the group. It got just the tiniest little bit better, 1.026 inches. Now at the time, when I was 100 yards away looking through the scope, I thought this was, I thought this group was worse. I thought it had gotten worse. But the first group being up in the orange dot a little bit, I think leads to a little bit of an optical illusion. So this group with the limb saver was indeed just a little bit tighter, but not much. A little bit of point of impact shift, but no great improvement in the group like we were hoping. So that was it for the M11. Next up was the ProComp 762. This is a guy, pretty light device, one of our lighter devices. It's got two ports and a couple little vents up here that go upward. The group in the last video was pretty good. Like it was 1.3 inches, but four, it was, you know, four shots really close together and one dropped quite a bit low. So it looked like it was trying to group, but the numbers just didn't come out looking very good. Well, in today's video, it was able to redeem itself. You'll see that it shot a 0 0.620 inch group. So very nice. It was trying to stack them right in there. That's good shooting. So the ProComp 762 moves over to the list of good devices. Definitely got the job done. Then just like with the M11, I added in the limb saver right behind this guy. And our group definitely got bigger. It got like uh, more than twice as big, 1.281 inches. Four of them looked pretty good, but that one flyer kind of went high into the right and screwed up the group. So once again, no like massive improvement by adding the limb saver to a device that's already shooting pretty decent. This is a surprise to me. Of course I didn't know, but I, I just, I felt like adding the limb saver to just about anything was gonna result in some gains, but just didn't happen. So next I moved on to the Harrell's Precision Tuner Brake. You'll recall in the last video, we shot two groups with this device, the weights all the way forward and then the weights all the way back. This guy has a little scale on it here. Yeah, there you go. A little vernier scale that goes from zero to 150. Last video, we shot 150 and zero. So for today's video, I shot three more groups with this dude 
and started out with another group at 150 and it turned out to be a 0 0.830 inch group. In yesterday's video, it shot a 0 0.881 inch group. So very close on group size between the last video and this one, good stuff. So what I did after that is I moved the adjustments down to 100 and shot this next group and oh man, it was ugly, 1.350 inches. That is an incredible change. And after that guy, I did one more, I moved it down to 50 and that group was a 0.671 inch group. So 150, 100, and then 50. And the group went from good to terrible to very good. I'm almost glad to see this. Like I was almost kind of worried that this guy really wouldn't do much. You know, you move the freaking weights around, nothing really happens, and it seems like a waste of time. That's definitely not the case. These adjustments seem to be making a lot of difference. So we've got, we've got a boatload of testing to do with this guy. It's gonna have its own video or two or three because it's pretty cool. And at least here with the compass, it really shoots well. Now my intention for the next group was to take the limb saver and shoot it with the Heralds. And I wanted to shoot it on the best group we had had with the Heralds. Once again, from 100 yards away, I had troubles uh, gauging which group was better. I thought the 150 was tighter. So that was the, that's the next group. I put the Heralds back on the 150 setting and shot it with the limb saver. And that's the first one that you're actually going to be able to see. So I tell you what, let's just go ahead and head out to the range. We'll get the rest of the shooting done and I'll meet you back here. All right, so it's looking like I might have lost all of that target camera footage from the last couple hours of shooting. I'm trying to remain calm, not get angry. Whatever, the show must go on. All right, so we've got the Herald's tuner brake. The weights are all the way forward, which means the setting is on 150. The limb saver is right behind it with about an eighth of an inch of a gap. So let's see if it shoots. All right, so I was not expecting that. Man, that's fascinating. So three times we put the limb saver behind another device and it's gotten worse every time. All right, time to switch to the next device. Okay, this is the silencer code break. First time we've shot this guy. All right, now we're back to the VG6 Gamma 6.5. This guy shot a real nice group in the last video, so this first one here is just a verification of that. Yep, there's no doubt this gun loves this device. That's another great group. So let's put the limb saver behind it, see if we can screw this up. Okay, this is the last group for today. Gamma 6.5 plus the limb saver. All right, so I'm not exactly happy about losing that target footage, but otherwise these were some pretty interesting groups. 
Let's get back to the bench, look a little closer. So before we start looking at the target, I wanted to warn you guys about something. So I, I'm, I'm impressed with the Herald's brake. It seems to be doing a good job. And what I thought was, you know what? This might be the perfect device for my 308 barrel. If you're not following along with the AR-10 series, I've got this JP, yeah, this JP Supermatch barrel. It's a pretty darn heavy barrel. It uses the big uh, 936, whatever the big gas block journal is, it uses that, right? It's a heavy barrel and it really has not been shooting well for us so far. Don't have a ton of rounds through it yet, but so far we've been struggling. And also it likes to tear up brass when we put on the suppressor. So I thought, man, I'll just put a Harrell's tuner brake on this guy. It seemed like it would be the perfect fit for that. The problem is that this only fits 0.870 inch barrels or smaller. The JP is 0.875. Of course, it's gonna read off on me. Whatever, trust me, it's a 0.875. So I was hoping it might be able to squeeze on there. This one is cut for or drilled for 6.5 millimeter. So this would be a good way to blow up a gun, but it's still the same device. They just drilled out the 30 cal and it does not fit. It almost fits, man, but it doesn't quite fit. So fair warning, if you're looking at the Harrell's brake, make sure it's gonna fit over your barrel. I'm lucky I caught that before I placed the order. Now, this is the 7 eighths of an inch size. There is a one inch size, but for some reason it is, instead of being 5 eighths, by 24 threading, it's 5 eighths by 32. So they've got one that would fit, but it's the wrong thread pattern. I'm gonna have to give them a call and see if they make the, the one inch outside diameter or if they'll thread me one in 5 eighths by 24 because I'd really like to put one on this upper. All right, let's look at the target. The main things I take away from the, the groups of, from today, adding the limb saver to a device does not seem to help. The improvement the limb saver showed in the last video doesn't seem to be additive. I was really hoping it would be, and it seems like it would be. Seems like a little bit of additional damping would be good for anything. But of course today, I only shot it right up next to the muzzle. Maybe somewhere along the barrel, we'll find a sweet spot. Cause so far, the only place we've shot this is out at the muzzle and then back by the stock. There's a whole other world of tunability with these guys. Kind of like the Heralds. From what people say, you move it a quarter inch and it makes a difference. So this guy is also going to be getting some additional videos outside of just this barrel harmonic series. And I would say that I still have a very positive opinion on this dude, but where in the last video, it seemed like it might be a magical solution to everything. We didn't really see it in the generic configuration we shot today. And it just made things worse. Like that Harrell's, the group more than doubled, the group with the pro comp more than doubled, and the group with the Heralds more than doubled when we put it on there. That's just bizarre. The Silencer Co. brake was not horrible, a 0.914 inch group. So definitely not one of our uh, worst devices, but not quite as good as the Silencer Co. flash hider shot in the last video. The Gamma 6.5 just seems to be an awesome fit for this gun. Like the ports seem to be very, like standard. That's uh, a lot like what we see on the other devices. The only thing I guess unique about it is the way it's uh, vents on the top look. I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be a whole lot remarkable about this device, but our Thompson Center Compass really seems to like it. So I don't think we've made any great leaps in understanding today. If you guys have, please let me know down in the comments, enlighten me. But at the same time, like, you know, the more things we try, Maybe we can start to narrow down what works and what doesn't, and maybe eventually that will lead to some idea about why they work and others don't. So is there anything left to talk about today? I'm, uh, I'm running out of things. One thing I definitely want to do, so we've got the other lumps coming, so that's definitely gonna be a thing. I'm down to 30 rounds left of our initial 250 pieces. So I need to load up some ammo. And I think I wanna take what we've kind of learned so far in Creedmoor and try some similar groups over in 6.5 Grendel. I'm not sure which bullet we'll use. The, my Grendel barrel does like this 140 grain bullet, so we may stick with the same bullet, or I may go to the 123 grain Sierra Match King. I don't know, I'm gonna think that over, but I wanna bring another gun in to try and verify what we think we've learned so far to see if it translates over to another platform. So I think that's where we'll leave it, folks. Depending on the weather and how the work week goes and all of that stuff, most likely the next video will be a week, you know, next weekend. But I'll try and squeeze in some work in the evenings if I possibly can. So thanks for joining me here for 
part two, and I hope you'll come back for part three. I'll see you guys then.